What's up, YouTube? We're going to talk about scalping gold. Scalping gold. Man, this chair is not working out. But anyways, let's talk about scalping gold here. So, I apologize. I don't know why I was on the daily chart here. But anyways, let's talk about scalping gold. Uh, this topic's been brought up to me for quite some time. And uh, there's been a lot of different topics to talk, discuss about. And so uh, I want to talk about scalping gold because a lot of people have been asking what's the best time for him to scalp gold and what, you know, what, what I should look for and possibilities of, you know, entering and exiting. So if you are using indicators, I really can't help you. I will come back and then touch a little bit about indicators on scalping, but you have to remember that. I'm more focused on naked forex with price action and candlesticks. And that's how I've been trading since 2018. I mean, obviously from 2017 to 2018, that first year, I was using everything I can on indicators. I was using eight, 10 indicators, you know, main window to the bottom window. But based on the, on the five minute chart here, I want to talk about the five minute chart for scalp and gold is because gold pays a lot of money. Gold pays a lot of pips and profits. And so depending on what broker you use, but if you have a, a one to 500 or, or higher on, on leverage, it's easier to maneuver and trade at a, at a smaller account balance. And you can easily flip an account, you know, with that leverage, you know, with the smaller leverages, like one to a hundred or one to 200, it's not so, uh, it's not as, you know, it's not as easy to actually overly, um, overly aggressive, you know, old trade, really aggressive in the account. So uh, I know I'm at a really bad time zone here on trading on talking about this topic. I apologize because in 10 minutes, New York is going to close. So there's really not a whole lot to look at. So based on this, I would keep selling gold and you can see that gold is just pinning itself back down. I would sell for it to come back down. Uh, was it 1908? So 1908 here, and I would look into the five minute and the 15 minute chart. And I'll explain the 15 minute chart here because you want to tie the five, uh, the five minute and the 15 minute together because they're so close to each other. I don't like using the one minute chart because it's just too much to look at, and then you're hopping from one minute to five minute to 15 minute. And then, and then if you see a trend then you end up going straight up to the 30 minute to the four hour or one hour. So you have to dive down and hop back into two um, back to back time frames. And the reason why I like to do, uh, I like to use this method is because then if there is a possible, you know, possible trend I can, I can follow. Like if this is on the 15 minute chart for gold, you can see there was a lot of resistance here and the 15 minute trend is going down, right? Back down to 1908. So that's why I would sell for 1908. Now, obviously we only have nine minutes left because I'm doing this at the wrong time showcasing this trade in the chart here. So based on this, I wouldn't even scalp, but I'm, but if I were to scalp right now, I would just keep selling gold. And then I would, obviously gold's gonna close for an hour so gold is going to close, you know, its session here in nine minutes because it's 3.51 my time, central time. And it closes from 5 p.m. I mean, opens back up at 5 p.m. So it closes from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then it and then opens back up at 5. But I would highly recommend waiting until Tokyo opens, which is 6 p.m. central time for those that live in central time or 7 p.m. eastern time for those. So... That is the easiest way I can simplify for your for your way of looking when you want to get in, get out. Now, when the first hour of Tokyo starts in, then you want to start looking for a direction. And so in any given opening of a session, you always want to look for a direction. So I so with this, like I said, I if for me, like I said, I would hold a sell and hold it. And then when gold opens back up, you know, within the uh within an hour an hour and 10 minutes, then you get a chance to see where it wants to play it out, right? But 
that first hour of an opening doesn't really do anything because it's just Sydney Sessions itself. So <clears throat> based on this, I would keep selling gold. Just, just what I'm looking at right now. Obviously, if you look at what has happened so far with gold, I mean, if you look at the daily, you can see how much it's been pinned back down. Now, you can see that this bullish doji candle, bold, yeah, this doji candle once closed down and created support here in 19, 19, uh, 1910. So with this creating support, I would move my horizontal line up here. So what I'm doing is I'm pinpointing structure of support and resistance, right? So we, so we see resistance up here, right? Candle to candle, 2062 and 1915 at the bottom on the daily chart. And then, so I'm going to go back here, back to the five minute. And to be honest, like I said, if you decide that you want to hold a sell and wait till Tokyo opens, that's totally on you. I'm giving you guys a rundown that if, where the possible scenarios are going to go if you decide to scalp gold. Now, based on the five minute and the 15 minute trend, you can see that it's been down, down trending ever since it created resistance up at 1950 and 1948. And it's been, and it's stuck at 1915 here. So, oh, now it wants to shoot back up. So, with this, you got to ask yourself when when you want to enter your positions. So based on, like I said, based on the five minute, 15 minute chart, you want to look back at the structure, look at where it's been, where the, the highest, right? So for me, I would always highlight the highest and the lowest. And you can see that for me, it'd be 1908. And up here would be 1950. But if you want to be a little bit more precise, then you can do 1948. And you can see that it's a $40 price gap on the five minute chart. Now, if you tie this with the 15 minute, well, no. I apologize. So if you tie this with the 15 minute, it's almost very, very similar, right? 1948. And then 1908, so $40 price gap. And you can see that it's just right around here, 1920 and 1910. So now you look, now you want to pin itself even closer, right? You want to narrow price down even closer. The reason why you want to narrow it down even further is because you can see the next resistance was here, 1922 and that it's trying to bounce off of 1912. So that's a $10 price gap. Reason why you wanna narrow it down is so that when you're scalping, you're not looking at a really broad range of price. You're not looking at a $50, $60 price, uh, price gap. Even at looking at a 50 pip, uh, 50 pip gap, you could still lose a lot of money because you're pinpointing the structure so far out that you're not pinpointing the amount of pips at the smallest range. And that's where people get caught up in scalping. And so for me, if I was scalping, I would look at maybe 15 pips at most. And if it, and if it's, if it's, um, if there isn't really anything within 15, 20 pips, 20 pips, I'd probably go, probably look, uh, start looking into, you know, seeing, how much more further on the direction of the trend I want to structure into, right? So, you know, within, like I said, to, for me, if you want to start scalping, you always target three to six pips and work your way up to 10 to 15 pips. But when you, when you, when you start scalping and you're shooting for a really high amount of pips, then you're just going to get yourself caught up because then all you're doing is trying to swing the position. So that's a lot. That's, that's what I got. Uh, that's how I lost a lot of money back then in the beginning because I would scalp, make money, but then, I, but then I end up holding it because I think that it's gonna both go in the same direction for the next, you know, session or for the next eight to twelve hours holding this position or maybe the whole day, right? So, very like I said, very important to understand where where you tie your time frames. But based on the five minute, fifteen minute, you can't go wrong. But you've got to look into and narrow it down on 
price range, tip range, right? It's either price range or tip range. For me, it's price range. And then, you know, for gold, like I said, I, you, we're looking at right here, a $10 gap right here. And that's very important because if you're looking more than that or even further on the trend, then you're, if you're trying to spot a trend, then what's the point of looking at scalping? Because scalping, you're not scalping for a trend. You're scalping to get in and get out so that you can make, you know, a few bucks here and there or a few pips here and there. So that's the easiest way I can put it down. Now, gold can be very tricky. I want to talk about this. Gold can be very tricky, can be very finicky on fundamental structures, on fundamental news, unexpected news, right? The pandemic, um, I mean, the, the pandemic has been giving gold a huge rush on the bull, bullish momentum. So is, is the fundamentals over? No. You have to understand that we still have more fundamentals that are going to play out throughout this year. And we still have the presidential election coming up, you know, in two months. Uh, you know, pay attention to who's going to be president. Pay attention to what is going to happen with the United States with the pandemic and the vaccine. Also, the stimulus program packages. Also, where the uh, United States Federal Reserve is going to go. Also, the other central banks that are involved and how the pandemic is going to affect them on the second or third wave. So there's a, a, there's a lot of phases coming in at the end of this year and don't get too caught up just because the technical, uh, the technical analysis is, is starting to work out. Remember, yes, gold is overbought at a higher time frame, but at a shorter time frame, the bulls could come back and the buyers could come back and rebuy this position and send it back up to retest 2000 again, or even at the highest, which was 2075 or 2080. So just be careful where prices are subjective at buying pressure and at selling pressure. So it is hard to sell gold because you don't know when it's going to drop. But this week has been a really strong. So gold has closed out because it's 4 p.m. But so that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So gold is closed out 4 p.m. But like I said, back to what I was saying that we don't know when gold is going to drop, right? And we have to anticipate the big drop. It did a big drop, right? And so, I mean, you can see how big of a drop it did. I'm going to go back to the daily. Well, not the weekly, I'm sorry. To the daily. And you can see how much it's, it's dropped, right? At the very top here. And then at the very bottom, 1860. And then this was like 2075. So that is 200, $225. No, I'm wrong. Two, I know it's over two, two twenty, yeah, two twenty, yeah. So two hundred twenty dollars in in price drop value for gold. So very important to see where this is headed. Now, this is my trend line. If it actually does break eighteen sixty and eighteen forty, and it actually closes below, man, that is pretty strong on some because on the weekly it would end up being a really big, massive, um, bearish engulfing candle in which it is right now and this is pretty strong on this on this ascending trend line if it actually does break so just a little sneak peek for you guys and what i'm seeing right now and how i have it all set up for gold here on on the higher time frames like daily weekly and monthly i mean if you look at gold in the monthly i'll give you guys a little sneak peek here on a monthly if this is what i'm seeing right now this is our new line of resistance at 1972 right right here i'm talking about right here from candle to candle creating resistance, right? 1972, I would hold a sell back down to 1800 to retest 1760. Remember, this, these, candles are not, these candles are not support until it comes down to 1560. Because 1560 was the major buying opportunity again. So very important to see where gold is headed right now going back down but the question is is it going to continue itself going back down right because it's still on a bull run it's still on its bullish momentum but if this is the reversal candle right here on the monthly creating that resistance then i'm going to hold the sell but that's not until we come into september of next month so there you guys have it i hope this helps you guys out you always gotta like i said you always have to dive in and Understand your own fundamental. Oh, 
understand your own fundamental analysis and technical analysis and how you overview the price action with candlesticks if that's what you want to do exactly how i'm doing it for naked forex if naked forex is not what you're if, if naked forex is not what you want to do then tie in you know the indicators that you really like to use right your primary indicator your secondary indicator if you have a third indicator you know that's your that's your um that's your third source of looking for confirmations if you understand what confirmations you're looking at then all you're doing is just second guessing the entries and exits and when you want to get in and take profit if you're not taking profit then obviously you're losing more money than what you put in so very you know that's why the number one thing i always talk about is that if you don't discipline within your own mindset, you're not gonna get there because all you're doing is just trying to look for free handouts. You're trying to look for someone else to make you successful. And like I said, no one's gonna hand deliver you their own success to you and make you successful. It's not gonna happen like that. And a lot of people look for babysitters or some kind of daycare that, they, that can make them even more successful. It's not gonna happen, right? But like, I'll be honest, like I don't wanna sit down and baby, baby anybody. You're a grown adult. You can you make your own decisions on your own life. You have your own life, right? You live your own life and you choose to whether you want to make it the best life or the worst life because of the you know, because of your attitude and the way you think towards life. So I can't stress that enough because there's more to life than just forex trading, but some people think that forex is eat, sleep, repeat forex. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Like I said, there's more to life than that. Like I said, I'm a family man, I got three daughters, you know, I got a wife. You know, I, I got other hobbies that I want to work on. And that's just, like I said, Forex is a great career change, life-changing opportunity. But some people just take it to, you know, a bad experience for themselves and they don't even get there. So, so there's a peace of mind right there for you guys in case you guys, you know, are having bad days. Like I said, well, we all have bad days and, you know, there's more to life than just trading Forex. I'll be honest right now. You got to learn to balance your life. But other than that, more videos to come and stay tuned because I am doing the FTMO challenge and I will update you guys on that too. So, but I am not going to announce that until everything's passed. So other than that, that's it guys. Peace.